to fasting. Could it be that the very thing missing from your walk with Christ, you you it's not reading the Bible. I mean, you've got the U version Bible app and you're reading the Bible reading plans, shout out unoffendable heart and some of those classics. It's not prayer. I mean, you pray, you pray all the time. You know, you go to church, you serve, you give, um, you attend, you, you've got a great group, you're in the connect groups and you're hanging out with people. What if I told you that the thing that you're missing the most is fasting? And Jesus Christ actually told his disciples, not if you fast, but this is the word he used, when. When you fast. And so there was an expectation. So we're going to be talking about that. Also, on the other side of this super brief teaching, I'm going to be hosting a Q&A and even bringing in some of the pastors of V1 Church to help give some wisdom about fasting. And so I want to be here to answer all your questions about fasting. I'm going to do a brief biblical breakdown. It's going to be very practical, very digestible. No pun intended. Come on. Don't hate on me. Dad jokes but it's going to be a really, really good time. Why don't we start by doing this? Uh, don't be a stranger. So write in the comment section where you are watching from. And I'm here in New York City. If you can't tell, it's still daytime. Isn't that amazing? <laughs> um, but I'm here in New York City. I see that we got people joining from all over. And we're going to take notes. So if you're a note taker, what's going on? I see, hey, pastor, <laughs> love you guys. I love my V1 Church family. Let me just tell you. You guys are the most precious part of my life. I mean, it's literally like Jesus Christ, and uh, then it's Star, my dog, and then it's Julie, and then, <laughs> and then it's my kids, and then it's V1 Church. So I love you guys so dearly, and I'm looking forward to this time together. You know, there's many, many churches that start the new year with fasting, and so January, they hit New Year, New Me, we're going to fast, and I've explained this before, but I always avoid the whole new year, new me thing. Let me tell you why I believe that it's, it's like booby trapped in every direction. It's almost a guarantee that you are going to fail trying to fast in January because, you know, life starts to pick up again. Your kids go back to school, the chaos, you're going back to work and everything's engineered for your failure. And so one of the things that I like to do is settle into the new year Shout out everybody who got the Chaos to Clarity Planner. It's available on Amazon. We're going to be breaking down how to use that planner. So if you don't have it, grab it. But, you know, just settle into January, settle into the year. Then for, at that particular point, we jump into fasting. So what, what is this? Let me break this down. This is a Lenten fast. And, you know, the early church did this. We're doing this in alignment with the early church. And um, what that essentially means is we're fasting starting, like it's officially starting tonight, and we're going to be fasting all the way until Easter. And that gives you 40 days. So for everybody who's like, what? You go to V1 Church, you guys don't fast in the new year? You know, we, we do 21 days of prayer and fasting. Well, you just tell your friends, hold on now, because when we fast, we fast for 40 days because we don't play games. We are spiritual warriors at V1 Church. So love you guys. I see all the love in the chat. You guys are just, you're throwing down. I Yeah, again, if you just join right now, uh, make sure that you comment with where you're watching from. I see Brooklyn in the house as well. So I'm going to do a brief biblical breakdown of fasting. We're going to start with a definition of fasting, so a brief introduction. Then we're going to look at Old Testament fasting. Then we're going to look at the New Testament perspective on fasting. And then we're going to transition into congregational fasting. What does it look like to, to, to fast with an entire church? So right now we have people that are members of V1 Church all around the U.S., in other countries, and we're doing a congregational fast. That's the fourth part of this teaching. And then the last but not least is the practical. So in other words, hey, Pastor Mike, like how do I, how do I do this? You know, And we're going to talk about that. And for many of you, this is going to be the very first time that you actually fast. So why don't we do this? Just throw in the comment section, what is the longest duration that you've ever fasted? What's the longest duration of time? Throw in the comment section. And yeah, it'd be an interesting question to start with. But let me do this. I want to jump in. I want to make sure I'm respecting your time because my goal is that you watch the entirety of this teaching so that our entire church is on the same page 
and then we're going to get to the Q&A. And I, I can see the chat. I'm going to answer all of your top questions about fasting. And then while I do that, I'm going to be bringing in different pastors from our team that can help me give some wisdom on fasting. So let's start with the definition of fasting. Now, uh, as you guys know, I'm really big into theology. I'm really big into doctrine. So the answer that I'm going to give you right now for the definition of fasting is a biblically-based answer. So and this is not a, an opinion. This is a biblical-based definition. Now, the reason why I have to say that is because in American culture in particular, especially the evangelical or non-denominational churches, they've taken license over you know fasting and, oh, yeah, you can do this and this and this. But I want to give you a definition of biblical fasting. And then we're going to talk about, well, you know, the other kinds that you may have heard from. So here's my definition for those of you taking notes, okay? My definition of fasting biblically is abstaining voluntarily from food or certain types of food for a specific period, and it's accompanied by increased prayer and seeking God. Okay, so let me roll that back to you just to help you understand. This is the biblical definition of fasting. It is abstaining voluntarily from food or certain types of food for a specific period of time, and it's accompanied with prayer and an increase in seeking God. So that's the biblical definition. Now, wait a second, Pastor Mike. I thought that in my other church, the pastor said I can fast social media. I thought in my other church, my, that my pastor said that I could fast um, cursing and saying cuss words. Listen, those are discipline issues. That is not definitionally fasting. Fasting biblically has always been, I mean, and you Old Testament, New Testament, it's either restriction of food or elimination of food, okay? It's restriction or elimination. For those of you taking notes, and the, this is the beauty of it. All of you can do it. I saw somebody in the comments say, I'm type 1 diabetic, but they still did like a seven-day water-only fast. I understand that there are medical constraints, okay? I understand that, you know, and I'm going to tell you some horror stories of people I know who have actually died as a result of fasting the wrong way. So we have to apply biblical wisdom and biological wisdom to ensure that we do this the right way. Because sometimes people are diabetic, sometimes they're pregnant. Some women are pregnant, and they're like, I want to fast. How do I do that? Well, I've got good news for you. There is, there, there is a restriction, and therefore, there's not just an elimination, okay? So what does that mean? Now, you don't want to restrict to the detriment of a growing baby in your womb, but you may be able to say, like Daniel, now let's just jump into the Old Testament pattern of fasting, is, you know, hey, Daniel chapter 10, you know, verse two through three, Daniel fasted and prayed for understanding. He was like, God increased my understanding. And the way that he fasted, and you guys have heard it popularized as the Daniel fast. And a lot of people will say, well, that's vegetables. Um, some people say that's vegetables and that's fruit. We Actually, there, there's not an ingredient list in scripture. We have a historic context but what we do know is that it was, we're going to refuse the king's meats, okay? So what that means is they were, they were uh, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, Daniel, in a Babylonian setting, which was a secular setting. They had access to all kinds of like these really high-quality meats. And so what they said was, we are going to go on like a vegetable-only diet, like a restricted diet, but God is going to show we're going to excel in strength and wisdom, and it's going to be a supernatural sign to you. So I would just say for those of you who are diabetic, if you're pregnant, you don't want to do anything to the detriment of a growing baby on the inside of you. You don't want to do anything that would cause you to pass out, lose consciousness. And the wisdom biblically that we see in Daniel is they understood that a fast is not always the elimination of food. Sometimes it's just the restriction of the types of food. Okay, so yeah, somebody in the comments said, you know, don't eat anything that tastes delicious to you. Listen, that can be a little ambiguous because if you were keto for like two and a half years, like I was, broccoli started tasting real good to me, which was that was bizarre where I was like, why do I just why am I eating broccoli like potato chips right now? 
So that kind of brings me to um, another big statement, and then we're going to look at some scriptures. Fasting is much more about the disposition of your spirit. It's much more about, because here's the thing, it's possible that you could say, well, I'm doing water only, Pastor. But even in doing water only, going to the maximum, you know, maximum extremity of fasting, you can still do that with the wrong disposition, the wrong heart, and actually eliminate the entire basis of your fast. And we'll look at that in a little bit. So for those of you who are watching this, like, okay, we're going to fast for 40 days. We're starting tonight. We're going to end it in Easter, you know, on Easter. Pastor Mike, what can I eat? What I can't eat? I'm going to give you some more wisdom on that at the end of this teaching, but I want to deal now I want to deal now with the spiritual, the emotional, the carnal and then we'll get that at the end, okay? So let let's just look at this. Old Testament pattern for fasting. So the Old Testament pattern for fasting. So in Exodus chapter 34, we have Moses on Mount Sinai. And Moses fasted for 40 days and 40 nights in communion with God. And he eventually received the Ten Commandments. So I want to make sure that you guys understand that that sometimes Christians make the mistake of believing that they are going that their their fasting is going to twist God's arm. Like in other words, I, I'm gonna it's works based fasting in some Christians where it's like, well, I'm gonna not eat, and then that's gonna release God to do A, B, and C. So let me just tell you, you cannot manipulate God by going on a hunger strike. Somebody quote me in the chat, but you cannot manipulate God by going on a hunger strike. God doesn't care if you don't eat. So fa there's a difference between a hunger strike and a fast. Sometimes political prisoners are like, I'm not going to eat in, until, you know, I'm going on a hunger strike till I change this verdict. Here's my point. A lot, like we don't fast for something. All right. You can't manipulate God. But I do believe that Moses, in desperation, was like, God, I want to be close to you. And th this is why I start with Exodus. The reason why I start with the Exodus story in Exodus chapter 34 is that Moses was credited as being a friend of God. Show me your glory. You know, God's like, I I'll give you what you want. What do you want? Show me your glory. I think him speaking that way revealed his heart. It wasn't selfish ambition. It wasn't, God, give me a really amazing plan so I can take it back to Israel and be the best leader they've ever known. I think it was literally like, God, I want to know you. I want, I want to know your glory. I want to be a friend of God. And in that, then guess what happened? He received the Ten Commandments. So I don't think that Moses' goal was the Ten Commandments, but I think that Moses' goal was to be a friend of God, and that released the Ten Commandments. So a lot of times when spiritually immature Christians— Is this good, by the way? Because I'm like, I'm feeling it on this one. Smash the thumbs up. If the, Give me an amen as a thumbs up right now if this is good. And the reason why I say that is you, when you read the accounts of fasting, it almost seems like, wow— Every single time somebody fasts in Scripture, God did something miraculously for them. They broke through to the next level. You know, something was released in the heavenlies. So, okay, I got it. I'm going to fast, and then it's going to release God to do something incredible. But I think that that's what spiritually immature people believe. Spiritually mature people say, no, actually, Daniel and Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego were trying to serve God in Babylon, and they were fasting to say, hey, God, we need understanding, which that that is uh, Daniel chapter 10. So it was like, Daniel was like, hey, God, I'm your servant here in Babylon, and I want to do the best job I can serving you and representing you, so I'm just going to stop eating and focus more on praying and, and more on you. And then in that, boom, signs, miracles, wonders, revelations. So we don't fast, you know, there, we don't fast to get something from God. In humility, we actually fast and say, God, your will be done, okay? So let me just start with that. That's so Old Testament fasting, Daniel, Moses. The other thing is there's national times of fasting as in Joel chapter two, verse 12. So sometimes an entire people, like in the book of Joel, it was actually 
the entire nation of Israel collectively fasted and they sought God's mercy in a time of, of national repentance and crisis. So sometimes we have a national repentance as well. All right, that's all Old Testament. Even Esther calling on a communal fast. So Esther chapter four, she says, hey, we're all going to fast together. Her and her people fasted and they were seeking God's intervention in a really perilous time. So that's all Old Covenant, you see that. Now, how many of you know that the Old Covenant is a mirror of the New Covenant? And so you would expect that those things would be mirrored. So let's look at that now. So we're coming into the third phase of this teaching. You guys are doing so good. The fact that you're still here, the devil's tempting you to click off. Your flesh maybe is tempting you to click off, but you're staying in this teaching. Keep on keeping on, all right? Because this is going to be a 40-day fast that changes your life forever. Like, I mean, we're, we're starting. Matter of fact, drop a comment right now. If you're going to go all 40 days, whether that's restricted or whether that's elimination, we're going to talk about that. But if you're like, Pastor Mike, to some extent, I am fasting for 40 days. I made up my mind I'm doing this, and by Easter, I'm going to be different. Forget about trying to beg God to change my situation. Let God change me. So if you're with me in the chat, just say I'm with you. Drop a comment or smash the thumbs up. All right, so let's talk about New Testament. Jesus' teaching on fasting is recorded in Matthew chapter 6, verse 16, which I always remember because 616 is my birthday. Any June babies in the chat right now? So uh, Matthew chapter 6, verse 16, Jesus emphasizes the sincerity of humility and the heart of fasting, and he's warning against these like open displays, self-righteousness, Look at me, I'm so holy. Look at me, you know, look, I'm doing, hey, I'm doing a, I'm doing a seven day, oh, I'm doing a 14 day, I'm doing 21, I'm doing 40. So really what God was doing through Christ was saying, hey, now this is why I want to bring it full circle. This, I'm going to unlock this for you. This is going to be a profound revelation for somebody. So in the old covenant, it would appear as if every time they fasted, God gave them something, God released something, God did something, and it would appear as if we could fast to try to get God to do something. But we are not like the pagans. Pagans are trying to appease a deity. You know, that's how the pagans have rain dances, so the deities will bring rain, and we don't, that's works-based. We don't do that. We fast instead because we want to be a friend of God. We want intimacy with God. Now, Jesus shows up, and he goes even further. And G what Jesus says is, hey, it's possible that you're doing a, a dry fast. It's possible you're doing a water-only fast. It's possible that everything on the surface looks right, but he takes it a step further and says, but because you go around looking all somber and complaining about how hungry you are, really you're doing that because you want to be viewed as righteous and, and holier than other people. And that in and of itself just canceled out your entire fast. So he's, he's speaking to the heart. He's speaking to the heart. And so do I believe as your pastor that God is going to break things loose in your life? Yeah, absolutely. But that's going to be the unintended consequence of this fast not the not the explicit reason for it because the real blessing is Jesus the real prize is Jesus he is the gift matter of fact we should have been spending more time with him anyways we should have been praying more anyways we shouldn't be eating as much as we're eating anyways right so this is should be deeply convicting but also encouraging and challenging so the new testament Jesus own fasting experience happens in Matthew chapter 4 so in Matthew chapter four, you know, before even beginning his ministry, Jesus fasted for 40 days in the wilderness and he's demonstrating this spiritual discipline and he's resisting the devil. So I just want to encourage you, oftentimes what precedes the next season is fasting and God will prepare you even as he prepared his own son, Jesus, through fasting. And so for some of you, there is a shift, there is a transition and God wants to divinely bring you into the, another season, but he'll take you first through fasting. 
okay? Hey, if you just joined this broadcast and if you're new to this channel, just hit the subscribe button right now and, and stay with us for the 40 days. We're going to be streaming through this time and fasting together. And I, I, even personally, I believe that you guys are going to literally through this camera, you're going to watch me change over the next 40 days. I mean, I started hitting up my leaders and saying, let's hold each other accountable. Let's go in. Let's do this thing. Okay, so the apostles now, so that was Jesus. Jesus was fasting. He taught his disciples how to fast. But then in Acts chapter 13, in Acts chapter 13, the apostles fasted for guidance. So just like Daniel in the old covenant fasted for direction and guidance, now the apostles in Acts 13 are also fasting for clarity, for decision making, because they're saying that we've got to make sure that there's something that we're removing anything that could that could deter us from making a better decision, and we've got to push aside the plate, and we've got to seek God. Uh, also, Paul, he had this big emphasis in 1 Corinthians chapter 9, verse 27, on self-control, disciplining, disciplining your body. You know, one of the things that I want to confess to all of you, and I think even as your pastor, this is going to be kind of weird to hear me say this, but um, I noticed just within the last two months that my eating habit was correlated to my stress. And so as my stress increased, so did my caloric intake. You know, so like the more stressed out I was, the more that I, more that I would eat, which really means that I was eating for comfort. And, but we know that Jesus said that the Holy Spirit is our comforter. So if this has been a good teaching, we're going to wrap up here in a few and then do Q&As. Can you guys just share this with somebody? Um, but also hit the thumbs up and tell the algorithm to get this into more people's feeds because I want to make sure that our entire church globally is united in this, okay? And so anyways, what I wanted to say is, you know, Paul now is emphasizing self-control, disciplining your body. I think that's part of this, 1 Corinthians chapter 9, verse 27. Now, I want to talk about congregational fasting because this is what we're going to do together. In Acts chapter 1, verse 14, there's this unity that we're supposed to have in, in, in purpose. Now, I just want to share some personal information about V1 Church. You know, we believe as a church uh, in accountability. We believe in a church about uniting together so that everybody fulfills their part in the body, right? There's the finger, there's the toes. That we all play our part. We come together. And as we assemble in fasting, I do believe that what we're asking God for is to, to graciously grant us access in regions to make disciples that make disciples. And what we're saying is, hey, let it begin with us, God. You know, if you're going to entrust us with more lives, let it start, you know, you leave the 99 for the one. And so I want to hold each other accountable. How many of you in the chat right now, just drop a comment, are willing to hold each other accountable so that we can go this full duration of time? You know, I'm believing that our Long Island location is going to be granted by God access to a building. And, and I'm not fasting for that building. I'm actually fasting with the congregation on Long Island so that all of our flesh, all of our desires decrease, that Christ would increase, so that if he give us a building, we come in more unified. You see what I'm saying? So like old school Pentecostals would be like, come on, guys, we need to get a building. Let's fast and maybe God will get us a building. That's a hunger strike. You know, we can't manipulate God by not eating. But what we are saying is we're saying, God, we believe that you do want us to have a building on Long Island. And as we are fasting together as a campus, you know, and I'm talking specifically for that campus, would you entrust us with this? As we say no to carnal desires and dissensions and divisions and backbiting and complaining and grumbling, and we say no to the flesh and we push our plate aside and we say, God, you know, you know what I'm trying to say? Like, God, entrust us with more. You know, if it be your will, release ability. That's more some of you who are single. You don't fast for a mate. You don't say, like, God, I'm fasting because I need to get married. What you say is, God, if I can discipline my body, just like 1 Corinthians chapter 9, verse 27, then would you entrust me with the opportunity to, um, to have a mate? So I'm being faithful with my body. Now, then I'm praying that at the end of this fast, you entrust me with another body, and we can become one body. And all the single people in the chat said, amen. 
So it's it's a lot like, you know, you're not really saying like, God, let me just stop eating so you do everything I want you to do. What you're saying is, God, make me the kind of person that can sustain the weight of what you've called me to. I want to die in all the ways that I need to die. Selfish ambition, fear, anxiety, worry. I want to die to eating food for comfort. I want to die to going to convenience. Some of you guys, this is even a financial thing where the fasting is connected to your finances, where the Lord wants you to increase in stewarding your finances and sowing into kingdom initiatives. And he's saying, hey, stop spending so much money on food for 40 days and reallocate it and invest it over here. There's some, man, I, man, you guys are lighting up the chat. Smash the thumbs up as an amen. And so congregational fasting, that's what that is. Guys, we're almost done. We're going to hit the practical steps for fasting, and then we're going to do Q&A. So I do believe, though, in 2 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 10, there's fasting and prayer for deliverance. Paul acknowledges the power of the Corinthian church's prayers and fasting in securing their deliverance. And so it's like, and, but again, you, the fasting isn't causing the deliverance. The fasting is starving out the thing that even demonic entities, you know, these demonic forces are feasting on your flesh. The more you sin, the more you feed your flesh, you're literally just giving it this decaying, rotting body to feed on. And so sometimes deliverance is connected to fasting, just like we see in um, the scriptures I, I, I outlined because you're basically starving out these demonic forces and you're saying, hey, listen, I, I you know, you're, I'm not even giving you a carcass to feast on. In other words, like you don't not even going to have any anything to feed on. So there's congregational fasting can actually starve out demons as well. You know, it's like whenever you have open food sources, when we got our dog, actually, um, recently, I didn't realize that, you know, when we got our dog, like a lot of times people get mice because they leave the dog food out. So then somebody told us like, Hey, you got to put the dog food away. You got to seal it up. Cause that's basically a food source for mice in the same way. Sometimes when you're not fasting consistently as a Christian, your flesh becomes a food source for, de for demons. You know, they, they love carnality. They love the fruits of the flesh, which if you read that in Galatians, you'll get a revelation. And so last but not least, in Galatians chapter 5, verse 22 through 23, uh, they support one another in discipline. And that's why I brought that in. So Galatians chapter 5, verse 22 and 23, fasting is aligned with the fruits of the Spirit, promoting self-control and then mutual support within the body of Christ, okay? So that right there, guys, we've got thousands of people watching right now, which is very humbling that I would be able to, to lead this many people through a fast you know, I do fast regularly. I typically will fast one 24 hour span a week. And that's my sort of like my regular like maintenance mode for the spiritual discipline of fasting. You know, I obviously have more videos on my YouTube channel about fasting. So if you just type in Mike Signorelli fasting, you'll see all those other videos go come. Matter of fact, I'm so passionate about fasting. Uh, my friend Vlad did an entire book about fasting you can read. And that's available on, on Vlad Softchuk's website. But, you know, we, we did a whole stream about it. You can watch because, you know, I'm sort of known in this area. Back in the day, I used to actually do Fast Fridays where I had uh, ministers and Christians from around the United States. And every single Friday we would fast. And we did that to be like anti-consumerism. We fasted. So Friday's typically the day everybody goes out. And instead we would fast. And it was just a attempt to stay in that spiritual condition. And so, you know, beyond the 40 days, so we're going to do 40 days starting tonight all the way to Easter. But even beyond that, this should be a regular part of your life, which is the perfect segue into the practical steps for congregational fasting. So just take a look in the screen right now. Just look me in my eyes. You are going to do this. You can fast. As a matter of fact, uh, you, your body was built for fasting. There's mechanisms on a biological level that begin to click over and your body converts. Now, there's going to be a duration of time as you start this fast, whether it's restricted or elimination, which we're going to talk about that. So stay with me. But there is going to be a couple of days where it's going to be rough. You're, you're going to be uh, detoxing from sugar. 
Um, and that, I'm telling you, if you've never, matter of fact, let's see in the chat right now, how many of you have ever detoxed from sugar before? Drop in the chat. It feels like you literally have the flu. And that's how, you know, typically we have 30, 30 tablespoons or more of sugar on a daily basis. If you've ever detoxed from sugar, it actually feels like you have the flu. So starting tonight, it's, you know, Wednesday night, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, it's very likely that you won't feel normal until Sunday. So this is me being very practical. Now, Pastor Mike, how do I do this? I'm on, you know, I'm diabetic. I'm pregnant. Okay, let's talk about very practical now. I do not recommend it. Now, I'm going to tell you the story of somebody dying. I know a person who did a 40-day water-only fast. Now, your body burns only two fuel sources, fat or glucose. That's it. So when you stop, when you run out of a, a glycogen store in your liver, when you run out of glucose, your body it is forced to go to fat burning or fat burning mode. And so that's why for the most of us, we are on a glucose dependent diet. That just means you have to eat every couple of hours you're awake because your blood sugar rises and falls with those meals that have carbs and starches and things that are basically transformed into sugar. Even meats can be turned into glucose. Um, for the, if, and I don't want to get too much into the science of all this. Now, you know, we, but here's the thing, and I want to encourage everybody who's diabetic, pregnant, you know, the people who are like restricted. You're going to have to determine what that restriction means because what I don't want you to do is I don't want to I don't want you to hurt yourself. There's a big difference between hunger pains, sacrifice, fasting and then explicitly hurting yourself. And the person that I know fasted 40 days water only. They switched from glycogen stores after several days fully over to fat storage. And quite frankly, depending on how much fat you have on your body, that's how much duration of time you can fast. And some people who are, um, and you know, I'm speaking on a scientific level, for some people who are morbidly obese, you know, they have a longer duration of time. Now, there could be other implications of that, and this all has to be doctor supervised for certain people, but there are people that can go longer durations of time because they have larger fat stores, right? So having said all that, like when I was in ketosis, I had a ketogenic diet, which is sort of tricks your body out into burning uh, fat instead of burning glucose because you just stop consuming anything that can raise your blood sugar. And then when you do that over a long enough duration of time, your cells become very agile and can switch in and out of uh, uh, different fuel sources. So I'm just saying that to you. I know some of you are in the comments are like, I'm lost. Let me bring it practical. So 40 days, this guy fasted water only. He, he thought he was okay because he was on his fat stores. In, in other words, like, he, you know, he was getting skinnier. He felt great. But then he ate a massive meal as his first meal to reintroduce food. And it was like a hamburger, fries, a traditional like American big meal. And, his, and, and within an hour... He was convulsing, severely vomiting, and eventually, unfortunately, died because it shocked his system so hard. So I want to make sure that as your pastor that I'm leading you in wisdom because what will happen is, you know, if you don't fast regularly, you know, like a 40-day fast, for example, is something that you need to build yourself up to. Oh, well, Jesus did it. Moses did it. Yeah, but you got to understand in their society— you know, in ancient times, they did not have, uh, they were not inundated with processed foods and sugar. They didn't have 4,000, 5,000, 6,000 calories a day, you know, so they, their bodies were very different than our bodies biologically. You know, Jesus, the diet that he would have been eating in, you know, in, in the Galilee in that time, it was basically like the most organic we could ever imagine eating. And then also by virtue of being a Jew in, within Judaism, you know, it was like he was there, he was fasting regularly. And so you increase the duration of time, but your body is conditioned. And the best way I can explain this to you, and then we're going to do a Q&A, is it's like running. You know, one time my wife trained for a marathon, 
and I did not train for the marathon. And I, we were much younger. We were in our 20s. So this is like 20 years ago now. And I literally told um, my wife, I'm going to run this marathon without training. And my wife was like, no, you're not. It's impossible. I said, I, if you, I, I said, I can mentally will myself to do it. And so like an idiot, I signed up for this marathon. My wife signed up. Now, my wife was training for months. I didn't train at all. All of a sudden, I got all the way to, to like the halfway point. And because my, um, I depleted all the, the glycogen stores in my body, I just fell to the ground and I was immobile. It was one of the scariest experiences of my life. Now, luckily, somebody who is a runner realized what, I, what was happening to me. and was like, what is this dummy doing right now? And they gave me these gels that were basically sugar, gave me a banana, and got me rehydrated, and then I finished the race. So it just like you can't, run, you can't have the expectation of running a race without training. I literally almost killed myself, and somebody had to intervene and be like, hey, this is science. This is not just mind over matter. Yeah, somebody says in true Pastor Mike fashion, the fasting is the same thing. Like even if you can just mind over matter, then you, you could get through a certain duration of time and really, really hurt yourself. So at the, one of the reasons why pastors fast in January, the 21 days is because they don't want to hurt people. So what I'm saying is we are going to fast for 40 days, but this duration of time from tonight all the way to Easter it's a more about restriction than elimination. So let me now give you the last round of um, the last round of round of practicals. So here's how some of you could start. You could break up the 40 days in three sections, right? Three or four sections, depending. And then you could say, I'm going to start by eliminating one meal a day. Then I'm gonna then I'm gonna increase after one or two weeks of two meals a day. And then towards the end, I'm going to be on only one meal a day. That would be an excellent, you know, a process that you would go through of conditioning yourself. That would be one way of doing this. Another example would be the Daniel fast, which we mentioned earlier, which is diet restriction, meaning, you know, for the 40 days, you're not going to do meats, but you are going to do vegetables. I would encourage you though, there's bone broth, there's there's things that you can do to still get some aspect of protein. Because again, for some of you guys, if there's too sharp of a jump off, that's when you could severely hurt yourself because you can go deficient. So the whole point of this 40 day fast is, is, you know, you're not trying to prove something to God. You're not trying to twist his arm. You're basically saying, Hey, I'm trying to spiritually discipline myself. And on one end of the spectrum, you can't go so restricted or elimination that you unintentionally hurt yourself or die. But then you also don't want to go on the other end of the spectrum where it's like, this is no big deal. You know, like whatever, I fell off, I'll jump back on. So you, we're trying to find a balance in this. I know that Tabitha in the comments section is saying, this is so rich. Thank you, Pastor Mike. But I'm trying to give you guys options. So option one would be a gradual decrease in meals. So eliminate breakfast. That's usually the easiest one to eliminate is breakfast. Then eliminate lunch. Then you'll get to the end where it's like, okay, the last week or two weeks, I'm just doing one meal a day. That's possibly a way to do it. Uh, the second reason that the way that I said to do it would be to do a Daniel fast, which is primarily vegetables. Some people do fruits and vegetables. Um, sometimes they'll supp supplement a bone broth so that they're getting some some protein in the midst of it, or they'll put like collagen in a, a collagen mix in their actual coffee, you know, and you can get like an odorless, flavorless collagen mix and put it in your coffee. And so that really are some ways, that's some ways to do it. Um, yeah. I mean that, that, that's my main suggestion to you guys. Now let's talk, let's go full circle and let's talk about, well, why can't I fast Netflix? Why can't I fast cussing? Why can't I fast weed. Why can't I fast alcohol? Uh, those are just like general d discipline issues <laughs> like that. And nowhere in, nowhere in the Bible, do you see somebody fasting, you know, like I, I, external pleasures in that way? I think if you're smoking marijuana, you probably shouldn't smoke it ever. <laughs> 
if you're drinking alcohol, you know, you probably shouldn't be drinking. Matter of fact, a lot of the latest science that came out about alcohol says that in any dosage, it's detrimental to your physical health. Even in the secular community, they're abandoning alcohol like crazy right now just because of the effects that it has on your, in any dosage, on your liver, on your organs. And to be honest with you, fasting and drinking is really stupid because actually alcohol is a form of glucose as well because of the sugars. So, you know, some people are like, oh, I'm not going to drink. I'm not going to cuss. I'm not going to watch Netflix. It's, I'm not going to, I'm going to, I'm going to actually s- sacrifice social media. I think the problem with that is social media for a lot of people, because they're not creators, they're not, you know, ministering online is just exclusively pleasure. You need to apply discipline to that. That's not something fasting. That's something that you need to apply discipline to. And I think for me, I, you know, when I look at the Bible and I just took you guys literally from the old covenant to the new covenant, and I showed you 100% of the time, my definition of fasting is either restriction of food or elimination of food. And I think if, if for some of you guys, that's where, that's where the pain happens. You know, that's where you actually say, you know what? It hurt me. So now for me, a lot of times I'll have black coffee. Uh, now for me, I only drink coffee black. So for those of you who have heavy cream, sugar, all that, some of you guys, it's, it's not even coffee. It's just like cream and sugar with a splash of coffee. You understand that also cream is fat. You know, it's the sugars. You want to stay off of that. You, now, black coffee is okay, but you don't, you don't want to be drinking. Um, you're basically drinking a meal. You know, you're drinking a meal. Same thing with sodas, pop, whatever you call it. It's like if you are drinking Coca-Cola, it's like that's 25 grams of sugar. You're kind of like drinking the equivalency of a meal. And so black coffee, tea, lemon water, those things are good. You don't, I think that's more what you're, you're trying to think in that realm, okay? So, okay, now here's what I want to do. We're going to transition to a Q&A. Right now, just on my channel, we have 1,100 people, which is awesome. If you're new here, hit the subscribe button. Ring that little bell note for notifications. We go live pretty much every day. And then if you guys haven't, it it costs you nothing to hit the thumbs up. It helps the algorithm uh, feed this to more people. And we want to make sure that our whole church gets this video about fasting. Okay, so um, some considerations. We're going to do Q&A in the chat but as we're continuing with the instructions, you want to make sure that you're hydrated. But, but let me give you a warning about hydration. And this is why sometimes a mineral water is, is good. Electrolyte water is good. Sometimes when people are fasting, whether it's restriction of their diet or an elimination of meals, what happens is they start overhydrating. And then as they um, are hydrating, they're eliminating sodium from their body and uh, electrolytes. And as they're flushing that out, they create uh, imbalance in their life, so uh, in their body. And so what I want to suggest to you guys is that as you're drinking water on this 40-day fast, you know, look at the mineral waters, look at the electrolyte waters, make sure that you're putting something back in. Because remember, 40 days is a long duration of time, and we don't need you guys being spiritual heroes. You know what I'm trying to say? Like, oh, look at me. I just only drank tap water for 40 days. Well... Uh, there's a really good likelihood that we're going to be doing your funeral because most people I know, I mean, even Christian juggernauts, m- giants in the faith, people that I respect have only done one fast in their entire life for that duration of time. And again, you have to be very calculated and very intentional about it. So I think for most of us, and I'm saying this with you, it's, um, you know, for most of us, it's... Um, you know, it, it is, it's going to be, sorry, I'm looking at the comments. You guys, make sure you put your questions in the chat right now. I want to answer. So for most of us, it's going to be to make it through this 40 days. It's either going to be one of two categories, restriction or elimination. And that means a Daniel fast, which is vegetables or vegetables and fruits, maybe some bone broth for protein. And then for the elimination diet, maybe it's eliminating breakfast, then working your way up to eliminating lunch, and then maybe even finishing the fast by eliminating all the all your meals and kind of going on that level. Hey guys, help me welcome. Um, we got some of our pastors that are going to jump in, and uh, 
let me put on my headphones for this. Hey, hey, hey. Uh, let's let's kind of do this real quick. Hey, we got Pastor Josh Hamster here with us. Hey, Pastor Josh. Hey, what's going on, Pastor Mike? Hey, hey. Then we've got Pastor Edwin Perez as well. <laughs> what's going on? Hey, so help me out with these questions. Um, let's see. How about pink Himalayan and baking soda in your water? I guess I can speak to that because I, as the guy who is keto for a while, you know, again, you got to be careful with the baking soda. I'm also not a doctor. I just want to say for the, for the YouTube algorithm that this is not like official medical advice. I'm speaking as a pastor. They're going to be speaking as a pastor. I would say the pink Himalayan salt, again, that just goes back to what I'm saying. Over the course of 40 days, as you're drinking water, you don't want to deplete your body to the extent that you don't have minerals and electrolytes and sodium, which could put you out of balance real quick. Somebody's asking about coconut water. Again, if you're doing a restriction, then that's, you know, that's fine. But, um, and, and I would say that's fine. Uh, you know, electrolyte water is fine. Coca-Cola, not okay. Sprite, not okay. And then, you know, Josh, I have to ask you as a, as a pastor at V1 Church, for, for the next 40 days, whether it's restricted or whether it's um, elimination, where does Dunkin' Donuts... <laughs> cream and sugar factor to this like what help every for those of us who run on duncan you know i, I, I don't but <laughs> yeah well uh it was funny because me and michelle were talking i was like i think i'm gonna fast 40 days and she's like what about duncan i was like well duncan's part of just like my my dna at this point <laughs> how could i not have duncan but yeah i uh that the coffee is a hard one that's for sure but yeah i you know i i had i i fasted food today but i did have coffee today that was duncan so i'm gonna yeah. tell on myself <laughs> <laughs> that's hilarious yeah we you know and again we're not being religious about this i know that some of you guys are like you really want us to give you and that's why i went back to the example of jesus in matthew chapter 6 verse 16 because yeah. what people want is like, give me the ingredient list. Tell me my diet. They want prescriptive, but mm. Jesus gave us descriptive. And so yeah. we don't have an explicit. And again, I want to say this too. What separates us from Islam? What separates Christians from Islam? Islam has an ex a, a command to fast. Some other religions have commands. We don't have a command. We have an expectation. So mm. Jesus said, Jesus didn't say if you fast. He said, hey, when you fast, mm -hmm. don't be like the Pharisees. Don't be like those. So we don't have a command. We have an expectation, which means we got to deal with this on a heart level. So that's why I think for some of you guys, we're doing the Q&A because really a lot of this is descriptive, not prescriptive. In other words, you know, the Bible doesn't say you, thou shalt not drink Dunkin' Donuts. Because he knows that what, what will happen is we'll become pharisaical and say, well, let's take those beans that we make the Dunkin' Donuts and let's put it in another package for this month that's called Starbucks. You know, <laughs> it's like, so I think for us, it's not about can I have coffee and not have coffee. It's about the goal is when you look at the old covenant and the new co covenant is what you see is them pushing away choice meats and restricting, or you see them pushing away food altogether and eliminating. And what yeah. does that look like to your life? So let's see these questions in here, man. Everybody's spamming the chat about electrolyte water. <laughs> Are you guys sponsored? What are you guys doing? <laughs> All right, what questions do you have? We got some pastors here. I think you guys are the only ones that rang in for this. Thank God. Hey, though. well, you got us. <laughs> okay, no. A lot of people are shouting in the chat. No sugar. What about um, putting like coffee mate if it's like zero calorie or something? Somebody said. I don't know how you guys would answer that. Uh, Wrong question. <laughs> <laughs> I, I think it's listen. I think it's a, it's about the heart. Right. Yeah. It's about your heart disposition. Like, you know, can you go without it? If the answer is yes, like, I'll be honest with you, you're not going to die. You don't need yeah. that zero, zero sugar, zero calorie, you know, coffee creamer. Yeah. Pastor Mike, I think somebody asked a, a question there about like what scriptures. I mean, I think you already gave like 20 to 30 scriptures already, to be honest with you. 
But let's go back to the last one that you said in Matthew chapter 6, 16, where Jesus says, right, uh, in the beginning of Matthew, he says, when you fast. So there's this expectation. He assumed that his disciples would actually be fasting, right? So what fasting also is, and I, 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 I say this a lot, is fasting is putting a exclamation point on your prayer, yeah. right? Because we know fasting and prayer are incorporated together. So guys, when you're, when you're fasting, you're offering the emptiness, right? You're offering this emptiness and you want to show where the fullness of God can be found. That's what I look at it. So you're emptying yourself of what you would normally eat. In Pastor Josh's case, it's, you know, uh, D- Duncan. He wanted to be in that Duncan Chino commercial with Ben Affleck. I know you did. Yeah, yeah. I've been, I've been trying for years to get sponsored. <laughs> One of these days. One of these days. But, you know, Jesus, and, and you said it before, Pastor Mike, Matthew chapter 4, uh, Jesus is led by the Spirit even after the fast, right? So when you're talking about people fasting for spiritual breakthrough, I think that that is good. But what if you're fasting so you can reconcile your relationship with God, right? Yeah. What, what if you're fasting, right? Jesus was hungry, actually it said right after, but yet Jesus still feed, he still fed the multitudes. Yep. Right, Jesus was weary, but he still offered rest. So, you know, fasting, is um it's a discipline you know and yeah. I, don't, I don't think many christians and pastors to be honest with you don't even do it at all i know you i'm so glad you said that so for the person who was like hey give me some scriptures like pastor eddie said just rewind this video i did give like old testament new testament over a dozen scriptural references and and so but let me let me just answer a few questions that we had here as well so um Basically, what um, I'm saying, you guys are so funny in the chat. I can't even pay attention. I, I love how funny our church is. You guys are hilarious. Uh, Josh is the dunk king, they said. Uh, <laughs> Pastor Josh is the dunk king. And so, you know, everybody thinks I'm coming for their Dunkin' Donuts. But, you know, here, here's the main thing, okay? Somebody said I'm, I'm deficient in vitamins, you know, and I'm prescribed or whatever, yeah. So here again, that's perfect for elimination. So let me ask you the question. How many calories do you think you eat a day? How many meals? And then what can you restrict it down to? Now, oftentimes vitamins need to be taken with food, yeah. but the, the good news is if you do one meal a day and that's a restriction, or if you do the Daniel fast, which is, uh, or I'm sorry, the Daniel fast is the restriction. One meal a day is elimination. Both of those, you could take your medicines with the meals you're having. So I think a lot of times when people hear fasting, they hear, oh, I get it for 40 days. We're not eating any food and we're just drinking water. You know, but that's why I said biblical fasting is restriction or elimination, which means you're just going to have to change. So you might take your vitamins in the morning, but if you don't eat breakfast and you're only eating lunch or only eating dinner, just move that to where you take them with that. So... Yeah, a lot of you guys, I would encourage you guys, though, who do drink coffee, if you're not going to come off the coffee, then I would say drink black coffee. And because, Mm. because again, you're trying to move it out of the category of food. The reason why I say that is like I was in keto for a long time and I knew what would bump me out of keto and what wouldn't. And the one thing that would bump me out of keto is creamers and stuff of that, that nature because of the sugar content. So I would say just stay away from that. Somebody asked a really good question in the chat. Oh, what about working out? Okay, so I'll I'll give a quick answer. And then if Pastor Eddie or Josh wants to chime in, again, so what's going to happen when you restrict your calories is you're probably going to go into like a fat burning mode because your body will slowly start running out of glycogen stores unless, and I want to say this real quick, unless you... um, eat too much in one meal. So I also want to warn you against gluttony because Mm. like sometimes people could actually be like, well, I'm only going to do one meal a day. But then that one meal that they eat is like 4,000 calories, 3,000 calories. And they make, they'll make up for an entire day of restriction or elimination rather by eating. And and they, and so again, you don't want to overeat. You also could mess your system up like that. So you want to eat clean, 
you want to get good a good amount of calories if you only eat one meal a day, but you still want it to be fasting, not uh, uh, I don't know how I would put it in a fancy term, limited uh, gluttony, you know. But let me just say this: with working out, I think you want to make sure that you're taking things slow as you're mm-hmm. fasting because it's always easier to take it slow and ramp up than it is to like drive it hard or at your normal pace and risk your body, you know, responding differently because of the caloric intake. I don't know if Pastor Eddie, you have anything you would add on that. No, I, I I think Pastor Mike, you're you're dead on. I mean, uh, me and you are workout guys, so we get it. I'm trying. <laughs> so, uh, but I, I will say, just I remember times, you know, going into a workout where I didn't eat anything, and I was so lightheaded after the workout because of the um, lack of uh, caloric deficit that I was in, and it it really is a dangerous thing. So I know some people are asking, is is protein shakes uh, good as well? Guys, you know, me personally, I've been drinking pro- protein shakes for over 20 years. Uh, they have a lot of added sugars. There's a lot of things. I mean, unless you're, you're getting a real plant-based, and even some of that has uh, a lot of things in there that are like extra. So to be honest with you, I mean, if you don't have to drink it, you know, um, because, and it depends on what kind of uh, protein shake it is, because they're not all one and the same. Yeah, you know what? I'm so glad you said that. What's so cool, by the way, is I love being on here with you guys and knowing that like just on my channel, there's over a thousand people, you know, and the reason why I say that is because Pastor Eddie is the real deal. He actually fasts. He prays. Pastor Josh actually fasts. It's very rare. I've met a lot of pastors, like you mentioned, that that literally don't fast. Real quick, though, you said something, Pastor Eddie, I want to piggyback off of. You said, yeah. you said, do you, if you don't need it, don't do it. Yeah. I think that a lot of times if you come in, this is where we're talking about the heart. If you come mm-hmm. in with the, with the disposition of like, you know, what can I do? Can I have my popsicles? Can I have my creamer? Can I have my shake? That's not just, just here's a, here's a, here's a way that may help you pretend you're asking Jesus, these questions, not us. Hey, <laughs> Jesus, <laughs> Jesus, can I have these popsicles? Jesus, can I have a protein shake? Jesus, can I, you know, listen, and you know he's looking back at you like, come on now, somebody. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so here's the thing. I don't know. Can you have a, pa- a popsicle? If you're only going to me- eat one meal a day and you want to allocate your popsicle to after that meal, go ahead and have your popsicle. Uh, you know, I-, I know that there's like 100 calorie popsicles and stuff like that. Go for it. Eh? You know, but but I'm trying to say like your heart shouldn't be how much can I get? It It's literally like, Lord, how much can I restrict? How much can I eliminate? That's where the the heart of fasting comes in, you know? Yeah, and that's something... I feel like I, my parents taught me at a young age even was like fasting is hard. Mm, Like if it's not hard, it's not fasting. Like it's, it's, it's depleting all of the goodness that is, is normally going in your body. And that's, and I love what you said earlier, pastor Mike, it's the goodness that's coming in. So you don't Mm. fast, you don't fast cigarettes. You don't fast alcohol. Stop doing that stuff. That's what pastor Mike said. That's a discipline issue, Mm. but it's like, it's, it's depleting all goodness to get the greatest thing in the world in you. So wow. it's like, that's something I feel like my parents instilled at me at a young age was like, if it's not hard, it's not fasting. Like it is difficult. It is. So, so trying to like broker and barter with God, you know, like, well, what if I did this? And what if I, it's like, no, do the hard things, the hard, like do the hardest thing in fasting and only eat the things that you don't want to eat normally. Like if you are going to eat something, eat broccoli and vegetables because that's still hard and not, not do the other things. Yeah. Let me answer a few questions because there's so much wisdom. Somebody said is fasting private between you and God. So in Matthew 6, 16, you know, Jesus is saying like, Hey, don't, don't be making everybody aware of it. But I also, the reason why I taught this the way I did tonight and go back and watch the teaching again, I talked about congregational fasting 
Acts chapter 1, verse 14, Acts chapter 13, verse 2, 2 Corinthians chapter 1. There's kind of like this congregational fasting, which is what we're doing as a church. So, you know, it, it's okay to, to fast congregationally. And so we will all know, we all know that we're fasting and that's okay. That It's just, you don't want to... You know, you don't want to like broadcast it in a way that's like self-righteous or look how holy I am. But at the same time, it's okay to fast congregationally. So that was a question that came in. And what heart posture should I aim for? I was told I was had the wrong attitude about fasting before and I did it wrong. Listen, don't that sounds like condemnation. The heart posture, like I said in the beginning of the teaching, should be like Moses. Moses didn't say, God, give me the Ten Commandments so I can lead these people better and I can look like a genius and come back with these tablets. Moses said, God, show me your glory. And then when he was in that place of 40 days of fasting and said, show me your glory, God then reciprocated with the Ten Commandments. But that wasn't Moses' goal. So the heart posture Mm -hmm. should be like, hey, God, there are things I want. There are things I desire, but more so than all that, show me your glory. I want to know you yeah. through this fast. I want to get close to you. And then as you're doing that, the Lord will release whatever yeah. he is going to release. That's good. Uh, two more quick things. So somebody said, uh, and I just want to blast these because they were such good questions. Any tips for me as a first time faster? My biggest tip, and this goes back to when I was talking about the marathon running My wife trained to run a marathon. I didn't. I passed out halfway through, had to get revived by somebody feeding me these uh, gummies or whatever, these like, you know, for sugar to get glucose in my body. For a first time faster, especially doing a 40 day fast, just um, start incremental. You can always increase it. It's just like you won't feel it's like this when you start working out again, Pastor Eddie, Eddie and I've been there. You think I'm not doing that much. And then the next day you wake up borderline paralyzed in your bed. What did I do to myself? So it's like you don't want to you don't want to be that guy or that woman that's like, oh, I need to I'm I'm fasting. And then you eliminate three meals the first day and two days in you're already done. You it, mm. I, like I said before, break this. If it's 40 days, you could do four 10 day segments and every yeah. 10 days eliminate more and work your way up to an, a full elimination by the end from one meal to two to three or yes. one meal, you know, or you, you know what I'm saying? You could work up like that or there's just so many different ways or you could do the Daniel fast the entire time. Um, Let's see. Let's see. Let's see. Wisdom, wisdom. You guys are shouting us out in the comments. Uh, Yeah. Love these yeah. comments. You guys are hilarious. You know, Pastor Mike, also, too, um, when you look at fasting in the book of Acts, uh, you actually see that elders were appointed to the church by prayer and fasting. Yes. So when did we stop doing that? (laughs) Yeah. You know? Yeah, they did. I mean, they believed that that fasting was for direction, clarity and decision making. And, th- and that's the thing is, you know, they, when they had to make a very important decision, they were like, I want to make sure I'm doing this in a, ch- in a fasted state. Yeah. So I think for many of you guys, there is a, I will be honest, even on a biological level, your brain is fatty. And so like, that's why omega threes are really good for your brain. You know, if you guys ever, ever heard. And so, you know, my point is when you start burning fat for fuel and you get deeper into like a restricted, you know, this type of thing, you will notice that ketones start mm-hmm. getting burned and for fuel. And even in your brain, you'll get this incredible yeah. clarity. So I think that there is a spiritual component, but there's also a physical component of mental clarity. Yeah. Well, I mean, I mean, the reality is fasting. Uh, there's so many scientists, actually scientific proof. Uh, you don't have to quote me for it, but that shows that fasting right, promotes blood sugar control. Yes. It helps with inflammation. So, I mean, even if you don't do it spiritually, some of y'all need to do it physically. Yeah. <laughs> right? So. Wow. Yeah, I believe it. That Well, yeah, it's just, and I think that, isn't that God's wisdom where when you, when you fast, it also mutually benefits your body you know, you build, you restart to rebuild your, um, you, your body in so many different ways. There's another thing called autophagy. And so, mm-hmm. um, it helps your body get rid of waste cells. And yeah. so you'll find that your body is eliminating these waste cells, uh, quicker. 
there's just so so many benefits to it. Guys, I'm I'm scanning the chat. Which fast are you doing, Pastor Mike? Okay, that's a great question. I'll answer that as your pastor. So I actually made a phone call. I, this is actually a good opportunity for me to make an announcement. So as you guys know, the movie, The Domino Revival, is going to be in theaters in Asia, and which is a huge opportunity. And I have to be in Singapore for the movie premiere. And I, so you guys know I'm headed to... I'm headed to California, and I didn't have a lot of margin on that trip because I'm trying to put a lot of things in a small period of time. If, for example, I'm going to be preaching at my friend Jeff Moore's church called Rhythm Church, and it's in Oceanside. And so you guys can find the information. Maybe you can spam the chat with that. It's in, it's on my uh, website, MikeSignorelli.com. You can hit the events tab. So I'm going to be in Oceanside. So if you guys are watching from SoCal, L.A., San Diego, San Francisco, drive out, and get to Oceanside for this event. It's actually next Friday. So not this Friday, next Friday. I'm going to be out there. Um, and I was going to try to make it to Bakersfield, but we just canceled the Bakersfield uh, meeting. My, my, I'll tell you what, my assistant, her name's Cassie, was so relieved because she was super stressed out thinking about how I was going to get to the airport. But you guys know I'm me. I'm crazy for, for ministry, and I'll do anything. So I was going to basically minister in Bakersfield. Then I was going to immediately leave and get all the way down to LAX so that I can fly to Singapore. And so I decided to give myself back some margin so that way I'm not rushing. Um, and I'm actually going to be leaving now uh, for Singapore on Sunday out of LAX. So that so for those of you guys watching, um, I had to cancel the Bakersfield uh, meeting. We had that plan. We were running ads to get people there. So for all of you who you know made plans, got hotels, et cetera, my sincerest apologies. Thank you for helping me get to Singapore for the release of the movie out there in theaters. Matter of fact, we're going to be filming while we're there, and we're cu we're currently working on Domino Revival Part Two, and this will hopefully will be part of it in Singapore. Um, but I just want to move everybody who was planning on coming to Bakersfield, if you would be willing to make the drive out to Oceanside. I know that it's like probably three hours or something. I'm not entirely sure, but I just please come out. I, you know, it's still my way of ministering to you, all of y'all while I'm in California before I fly out of LAX. Uh, but if you were planning on Bakersfield, I just announced that it's canceled so I can get to Singapore, but then I'm still going to do the event in Oceanside so we can all get together there. It's going to be very powerful. And so, okay, now the reason why I said all that was because I am going to be traveling with, uh, with Evan, who's also a pastor on our team. And I, uh, I hit him up and I just said, Hey, you know, I, I want to be accountable. This is a congregational fast. What do we do? And and so really, I, I told Evan, I was like, I think for us, it's going to be elimination. I think we're going to, I think the only way we can do this is just one meal a day. I think if, I, because I'm ministering out there and I'm doing different things in Singapore, it, it, those of you, for those of you guys who don't know, it's like a 20 hour flight, like 20 hours in the air. So I, I, I think there were some safety concerns. I'm going to be on a very different um, time zone. But I just told Evan, I said, what if we just do one meal a day? And that for us is like a, a severe restriction, you know, or elimination of meals, but it still gets it done. So that's what I'm doing. I know that was a long answer, but um, so I will not be in Bakersfield on the 25th because on the 25th, I'm flying to Singapore now to get to their premiere for the movie, but I am going to be there, uh, be in Oceanside on that Friday. And so for those of you guys in the chat, I saw that. So to help me spread the word. I, I, I'll do whatever I can to help get the word out there as well. But then I'm going to be doing, you know, the one meal a day. I don't know if you guys feel comfortable sharing with people what you think you're, you're going to do just to give them uh, an idea. Pastor Josh, I think, is only going to be on Dunkin' Donuts. He's he's limited. He's it's D and D only. That's uh, that's that may actually literally be the, the what's happening. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we uh, me and Michelle talked about it, and uh, I know she's going to be doing just one meal uh, at night. And I did, and I know I told you this, Pastor Mike. I I I've done like two or three weeks when I was younger and i i am gonna try to do a full 40 day liquid only mm -hmm. uh and i know that's it's like you got to hear from god 
to yeah. be able to do that, you know? And, and so I am going to, that's my plan. Um, but what's funny, cause we just looked at our calendar and we have so many meals with people in the next 40 days. And I think that's where, even in those circumstances, it's like, I never want to be the guy that's you, you go to a restaurant. Oh no, guys, I'm fasting. Yeah. You know, uh, you eat, uh, you know, so even in those moments, I, I, I believe there's, there is places where it's actually right to eat with other people because it's something that you're doing together. Uh, and sometimes it's actually harder to break a fast and then go back on a fast <laughs> after that meal. So, yeah. uh, that's, that's our plan. Yeah. Well, again, I think the way you prefaced it by saying, Hey, you've been fasting for a long time, so you're going to try to do liquids only. So that's another form. So liquids only 40 days. And, you know, I think that's incredible. I, you know, but again, you have a history of fasting. It's something, you know, for yeah. me, I can, this, what's crazy is, um, I'll, I'll say this and then I'll kick it over to pastor Eddie to reveal what fast he's going to do. But what I just did a comprehensive physical and I came in there and, you know, you do the urine test and the, they were coming back on the results. And the doctor was like, your ketones are insanely high. Like, are you starving to death right now? Like, are you okay? And I was like, no, I said, I, I, I'm a pastor. I fast a lot. And for me, it's nothing. Pastor Josh and I have talked about this. There's some times where like, it'll be seven, eight, nine at night. And I'm like, I haven't eaten yet today. You know, I think Isaiah Saldivar is the same way. You know, I have friends like that where it's just like, you know, and I think for me, it's the discipline of fasting. Now, I know I'm not the skinniest guy, so it's pretty obvious I can eat. But I, but what's weird, though, is like that you could literally be 20 pounds, 30 pounds overweight, but you could have the discipline of fasting and still be able to go a duration of time like it's nothing. Like for me right now, I could just stop eating entirely and I wouldn't really feel it till about three days in now, which is wow. crazy because yeah. I, I was doing some experiments like a couple of years ago. I was doing some experiments with fasting like this and it was all spiritual stuff, but it, I was trying to ran some time back to pray and blah, blah, blah. And I was like, man, and I was doing timers. So I had like a fasting timer and it would tell me and it would be like I, I would be getting close to like the 70th hour before I started to actually get hungry. Um, and then if I push past that, then I would really start burning fat. So I wasn't doing it for fat burning, but I, I was doing, but my point is like what Josh, pastor Josh is doing. I think it's like, you have to be a different level, uh, to do that. For me, it's like, I'm not even there. I'm not doing a 40 day liquids only, especially with me going to Singapore and back California, then Singapore. I think for me, just like, uh, uh, elimination is going to be it. So pastor Eddie. Yeah, man. Well, I think, well, I actually did a 40 day fast when I was like 17 years old and it was just water, which was crazy. I don't know if I'll be able to do that again. I think it was a little bit of God and a little bit of, uh, am <laughs> stupidity. <laughs> <laughs> Can I say that on your channel? Yeah. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. I say works. <laughs> right. It was like, Oh man, you know, so, uh, but I think it's, um, but since the age of 17, just fasting uh, till now, me personally, I'm going to do more of like an intermittent fasting. I think I'm, I'm yeah. going to go more like that. So I'll do the, the one meal uh, and, or maybe the two meals at a certain time periods of the day and then come back and have dinner uh, uh, with my, uh, with my wife <laughs> and my family. <laughs> so I think I'm going to do that for the, for the whole 40 days and, uh, just eliminate, uh, you know, during certain blocks of time. But, uh, yeah, yeah. Yeah. I love that. I actually like what you said. It looks like we're coming to the end of a lot of our questions. So we're because, especially because you guys are here, I want to pray for our entire church as we come together over this fast. We still have well over a thousand people just on my channel alone right now. Um, but you know, yeah. Uh, <laughs> I, yeah, I'm, I'm looking at the chat. Somebody posed a question that actually wasn't a question. It was a statement. So if you guys have any other questions, somebody's asking about fruits. You know, can I have fruits even though it's sugar? But again, th this is my point. We didn't say that you have to eliminate sugar in order for it to be a fast. I just simply said that to cooperate with, with the word that Pastor Josh said, 
fasting <clears throat> should cost you. It should hurt no. you to a degree. It should be st- a struggle. So now there, like I said, me and Pastor Eddie just had uh, lunch with a New York City pastor a couple of weeks ago. He was on a a Daniel fast, but it was vegetables and fruit. So that's a naturally occurring sugar. If that's what you decide, hey, for 40 days, I'm only eating fruits and vegetables, then that's what you decided. You're still, if you're a meat eater, you're still restricting. You're not eating meat. If you eat carbs like breads and starches, you're not doing that. You're still going to get some carbs from the vegetables and starches from the fruits, but you know that's your thing. So again, it's not about prescribing. It's about the heart before God. So we're going to pray here in a little bit as a church, but I like what Pastor Eddie said, and I just wanted to highlight this. He said, by me, by me doing uh, the, like a, a intermittent fasting, which is you know basically eliminating breakfast, maybe having lunch, then dinner. He's also able to eat with his family in the evenings. So I, it's I'm glad you said that because I I just want to explicitly get that out there. When I do one meal a day, you could do breakfast, you could do lunch, or you could do dinner. I think for me, it, I like dinner because it allows me to sync with my family. Uh, somebody's asking about bone broth. Again, you know, it's up to you. It's what are you doing? Like for Pastor Josh, I would say he might end up having bone, bone broth, right? Are you including bone broth since you're liquid only? Yeah. 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 Definitely. So, so for him, the, you know, and if you know anything about bone broth, there's like chicken bone broth, there's beef bone broth, there's uh, in, there's protein in there. It's not the same as eating a steak or eating chicken, but there is going to be some protein matter. So it's not like he's he's going to do 40 days just water only, which could be very, very dangerous. Okay, so let's see. I like that. Jasmine said something in the chat that I'm going to repeat. This is a cool phrase for fasting. I want to hurt my cravings. Mm. That's a cool phrase. Mm. Yeah, there you go. You guys yeah, are rocking good. it. Okay, so what I want to do is um, I want to pray, but let's talk about breaking the fast. Now, we're going to be talk more about fasting as we go, but I want to give you guys something to ex- you know for an expectation. So remember I said you can break it up into four 10-day segments and gradually increase the elimination of things from your diet. That's one way. You can do the entire 40 days, only fruits and vegetables. You know, there's you have a little bit of variety in what you can do. We try to present a lot of different aspects of that today. But you do want to be careful that you progressively break the fast. So you know, now when you go to sleep, you're fasting. So every night when you go to bed, you don't eat while you sleep, hopefully. And then you wake up in the morning and you break fast. That's breakfast, right? You break the fast. So you could fast for seven, eight hours while you're sleeping and wake up and smash a huge breakfast and eat a whole bunch of food. You're going to be fine. But if you fast for 40 days and eat a whole bunch of food, you could kill yourself. So the thing that I'm trying to help you guys understand is, you know, when you, when you do this, like, like, again, if it's 40 days, I would progressively increase. Then at the end of the 40 days, I would uh, progressively increase again, adding foods back. You're going to be tempted because you've been eating your entire life. You, you're going to be tempted to like, oh man, the 40 days is over. Let's go crazy. You will pay for it. If it's not physical, physically keeling over, mm. you you will pay for it. Diarrhea, all that, mm. right? So what I want you guys to do beyond this, because I got so many more teachings on fasting, is just go to my YouTube channel and type in Mike Signorelli fasting. And you'll see videos with me and Vlad Softchuk, me by myself just breaking this down. And we also have a I have a Bible reading plan called Fast Forward. So if you go to the YouVersion Bible app and you type in fast forward, fast forward, you can read the Bible reading plan and you can go through that as well. So got a lot of resources for you. And somebody said in the chat, Jillian Hill said, you need to come out slower than you think. Yes, that that's partly why I like this 40 day fast is because you can incrementally increase it, incrementally decrease it. And you really just don't slam in those gears too hard. So type in Mike Signorelli fasting in YouTube, watch more of my video teachings on it, and then also go to the YouVersion Bible plan fast forward, 
just basically search in the Version Bible app. Fast forward, you'll see it. It might might be on my website as well, MikeSignorelli.com. Okay, let's see here. Yeah. All right, cool. So I'm going to pray. If you guys want to help me pray, we're, we've got over a thousand people watching just on my channel alone. This is a lot of lives, a lot of people who are like, I, you know, I want to do this and, uh, you know, I want to do it right. God, I want to, I want to see your glory. I want to be a friend of God. That's why we're doing this. So I am going to kick it off. You guys can pray and then we'll, we'll wrap it up. So heavenly father, I pray for each and every person who represents V1 church across the entire world right now. God, I pray that this fast would be a time where they draw near to you like never before, a time where they come into a place of prayer and intercession, a time, God, where they take that time back and they say, I normally would be eating, but now I'm praying, now I'm reading the word. Like Pastor Eddie says, it's an exclamation mark at the end of their prayer, at the end of their statement. Lord, that, that, they, you, that heaven would hear them in this time, God, that we we would begin to cry out on behalf of our families, on behalf of our church, mm-hmm. on behalf of our communities, God, that we would begin to cry out before you for our nation. Even as we saw in the book of Joel, that there was a nationwide fast. God, I thank you that even we come together, we fast for our nation. Lord, we, we fast for our congregation. We fast for our family, Lord. And Lord, I thank you that it would be a sweet smelling savor unto you, that the aroma of our sacrifice would meet your nostrils, God, that you would literally be pleased with our sacrifice. And Lord, that we're not fasting for something, God, that we're not doing this as a hunger strike, but rather, God, we're coming before you and saying, we we want to decrease so that you increase, God. And we just thank you for all that you're going to do through this time from now till Easter. Father, we thank you. Father, thank you, Lord, that uh, we can come here together and we could fast and cultivate a holy hunger that is happening right now. Even those that are watching, oh God, that have never fasted before, God, I pray that they will encounter you in the fast. I pray spiritual breakthrough happens, God, but I pray more that there is a dying to self. Help us in our weakness, Lord. Get us to the point of our knees where we are crying out, to you, Lord, day in and day out, like Anna who fasted day and night. So Father, I just pray right now, Lord, as we fast for the nations, as we fast, oh God, for our world, as we fast for our churches, Lord, worldwide, as we fast so that prodigals could come home, as we fast for marriages to be reconciled, as we fast for addictions to be broken, God, but here we want to fast also to get to the holiness of who you are. Come on. And God, I pray that we will be able, oh Lord, to have that burning bush experience with you, Lord. And whatever it takes, whatever mindsets that we need to lay at the altar, I pray, God, that we lay it at your feet. Lord, teach us to wash the feet of our Judas. Teach us, oh God, to love one another. And Father, through this time, speak clearly or what the Spirit is saying to the church. Mm. Mm. Yes, Lord, I just pray, Father, that as we empty ourselves of food and the good, even the good things that you have given us to nurture us and to, um, to, to sustain us, Lord, that you would fill us, Father, fill us to, to an overflowing, Lord, that we would learn how to pray in this season. Mm. Lord, that we would learn how to go to the secret place. Lord, not giving up lofty, long prayers even, Lord, but we would learn how to be simple Mm. even in our tongue, even in our prayers, Lord, that you would bring a simplicity. Mm. Lord, remove the complexity of, uh, and I just hear this prophetically. I believe that some of you guys are so complex in your Christianity. You have given lofty prayers. You have given hard prayers. And the Lord is saying in this season, you're going to learn how to be simple. Mm. You're going to learn how to how to say prayers that are powerful, but not trying to win over someone with how you talk. But it's going to be it's going to be a simplicity of tongue, a, a simplicity of prayer that the Lord is bringing to the bride. So, Father, I pray, Lord, that we would not try to pray prayers that impress people, 
Father, but but that we could come to you and and with even with no words that we just go to your Psalms, we go to your scripture, Father, and we pray prayers of scripture, Father. I just pray all this, Father, in your holy, righteous, amazing name. Mm. Mm. Amen. Man, amen. 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 I'm excited. Man, I've honestly, of all the years that we fasted together as a church, this feels different. Yeah. This feels different. I just want to does, encourage yeah. you guys, like, you know, right now we have the dean of our college, V1 College. We have our executive pastor internationally, and we've got the lead pastor here. And uh, we're just servants. You know, that that's all that we are, servants, just humble servants. You know, we want to we wanna be here to lift you up. We're not mm-hmm. over you. We're under you, pushing you up to the Lord, saying, come on, do this fast. Like, just, just go full in on what God has for you. Mm-hmm. And so we're here. We're going to be here. There's going to be different videos and resources that are released. Again, I saw you guys spamming the chat with the link to the Fast Forward Bible Reading Plan. Definitely complete that. Go through that. If you're like, what do I read? It's there. We're still going through the book of James every single Sunday, line by line. And so this Sunday, we're going to continue that. And guys, I love you. This is going to be amazing. And again, we're not fasting for something. But I do do believe that what's going to happen is as our hearts come into alignment with his will, he is going to begin to release things. He's, he is going to begin to put things into the proper alignment, put things into the pro. It's, it's just going to be, I, I don't know. Here's what I want to tell you guys, though, before we get out. I wish I would have brought it with me. You know, if you have a, a chaos to clarity, you know, like one of the clarity planners, which, by the way, Pastor Josh's wife was the, oh, oh, <laughs> I love it, man. What a team. So, I love <laughs> so pastor pastor Josh's wife Michelle that was really her baby that was her vision she was like pastor Mike I know that you stand for time management you know you know he was like she was like I know that this is a big thing that, about your life teach me to number my days that my heart might be full of wisdom so we've numbered our days 40 days and if you do have a clarity planner what I want you to do is go in there and plan for the fast. But here's the bigger thing, whether you have the clarity planner or another planner, you know, or a demonic planner, I should say, Uh, (laughs) whatever it is, whatever it is. um, What I want you to do is I want you to begin to document all that God does, make a diary and document what God does. Just track it, you know, because like if, if Moses had a diary in the book of Exodus, like He'd be like, I fasted 40 days, I saw his glory, and then I got the Ten yeah. Commandments. You know, yeah. it's like if if uh, Daniel had a diary, he would say, you know, I fasted for understanding, and then, then Michael the archangel was duking it out in the heavenlies and released revelation. You know, it's like every single time there was a fast, the Lord began to do things. So what I would do if I were you is I would diary this thing, man. I, I even, I'm speaking to myself, like trace yeah. and track what the Lord does during this 40 day, 40 day time starting tonight. You guys got any final words for it, for him? Man, well, do it, do it upon the Lord. He will give you the strength. The Lord will give you the strength to do this. I know some people are like, oh, I'm not going to have the energy because I work, I, I work long hours and I work in the fields and I, I'm digging or whatever it would be. The Lord will give you the strength because he yeah. has willed this upon you. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, I would just say my last word is, you know, when you get hungry, get hungry for God. And, uh, you know, <laughs> that's it. When, you feel, when you feel that pain and you want to look, you, you want to look at that Dunkachino or whatever you, you you're craving at that moment. Say, no, I'm getting hungry for God. Open up the scripture start praying and just uh seek him first so wow this is good well you know and I, again we're gonna i'm gonna close this thing out right now but when you said when you get hungry get hungry for god it really made me think that this is one of the most potent evidences that we believe in the existence of god mm. so in other words when daniel and shadrach and meshach and abednego when they were fasting it almost seemed like insane like wait a second we you know all these other servants were like 
hey, but you understand that we can actually eat the best meat in all of the kingdom. Like, why would you not eat this? Like, matter of fact, this food is so good that it's going to nourish your body and make you stronger. And, and literally they were like, no, you don't understand. Like w- your meat can't make us stronger than our obedience to God. Mm. And I even think about the words of Jesus where he's like, I don't live on bread alone, but every word that yeah. proceeds out of the mouth of God. So for me, the biggest evidence you have, like people are going to be like, wait a second, you're fasting. It's even going to be a witness to those who are unsaved. Like, yeah, this is how real it is. And what's going to happen is your skin is going to start to heal. Your body's going to start to heal. I might even regrow a full head of hair. I don't know what's going to happen, <laughs> you know, but all joking aside, you know, it's, I really do believe though, that God, people are going to see visible signs of a change of a transition uh, and you're going to say, I don't live on bread alone, but every word that proceeds out of the mouth of my father. So love you guys. I'm going to end it here. Do me a favor and share this video out with all your friends from V1 Church, everybody that's doing this fast with you. This is a congregational fast, which means you should invite people. You should do this together, hold each other accountable. So just tap that share button and text it over to people. Um, if you're brand new to the channel and you just stopped by, hit that subscribe button, join us. We have such a healthy community of people. We're learning together. We're growing together. And so hit that subscribe button, ring the bell notification. And then lastly, hit the thumbs up if this has been good for you. Um, I know that I just saw Rachel posted in the chat. I probably should announce this. So I just announced that, you know, I, I'm going to be in Singapore instead of Bakersfield. So I'm literally going to be flying around the world. But, but the good news is, even though I'm not in Bakersfield and I'm going to be in Singapore leaving on that Sunday, that Friday, which is next Friday, I'm going to be in Oceanside, California. So make plans to be there. But then uh, something that Pastor Josh and I were talking about, the stadium event that we're doing October 24th, it's the Breakers Conference, is already 20% full. So that means that out of the entire stadium, I either the floor sold out completely or there's just like a few seats left. Am I right, Josh? Like as of this morning, we almost sold out yeah. the entire floor. So it's probably yeah, almost gone. the whole. F- yeah. So, so I get just, your tickets. Yeah. I was just going to say guys, like please be fasting and praying for the stadium event. God's going to shift something in this nation, in this world. And so make sure you get to the breakers conference and I was just like, wow, the floor is already gone. Like every seat in the floor, wow. there might be a couple more left. That means only the rafters are filling up now. And and so you want to get there. I want to see you out there. It's going to be an incredible time together. And we love you so much. Um, all right, guys. The fast begins tonight. I'll see you guys Sunday. Love you. <laughs>